Well, one, before we go, uh, Roger, you said you haven't seen Adam in a long time. I, 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 this is the first time you guys have talked in a while? No, I mean, like, social media or emails, we're always, like, checking in. Like, we're, that was the cool thing about this movie. Like, we're, we remained all actually really good friends. Uh, uh, Chris Bender and Jake Weiner, the producers, um, and Adam and myself, you know, because you know, this was like one of those movies that like just keeps building a fan base over the years. So it's always nice when somebody writes an article or somebody reaches out and then we all kind of email each other and, you know. Yeah, I mean, Adam, I don't know how, if Roger said it, mentioned anything to you, but this was the first film that I ever reviewed. And it's actually the movie that got me my job because when I was at George Mason University here in Fairfax, Virginia, I was interning at a radio station and I want, I've always wanted to talk movies, but I never saw myself in any, any type of broadcast situation. And my school was doing one of those like word of mouth screenings uh, where they were like passing out tickets to all the students in, 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 at, at Mason. And I grabbed one and I went and saw it and I reviewed it on the air. And then they took calls from the callers and said, would you want to keep this kid or not keep this kid as, a, as our movie reviewer? And, and then I ended up staying on from there. That was. 15 years ago so um oh, awesome. it, i feel like you reached out to me you might have sent me an email or something saying that i think we had a brief email exchange about that but i could be i could be wrong but that's i think you you might know somebody that that i know I, I'm, I'm trying to remember I, I know exactly what you're referring to i remember someone mentioning that you, that my, that their friend adam wrote the film and mm. i don't know if we ever like actually connected um do, do you, you know eric davis Yes, Eric Davis, okay. that, that's who it was. It was yeah, um, he's my cousin. So Roger, do you know who Eric Davis is? Eric Davis writes for Fandango. He's, um, he's awesome. He lives in New York and that, oh. that's the connection, Adam. You're right, because oh. he DM'd me and said, Mike, that's, that's right. awesome. Cool. All right, well, first of all, uh, thank you guys for doing this. Uh, you know, I've seen this movie <laughs> dozens of times. We watch it. it. It's one of our favorite Christmas movies, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, it's become like a classic uh, for me and my wife and over the years. Um, but I'm just going to start off with the I swear element because that is such an iconic moment. It's Ryan in front of the mirror. Uh, it's, you know, he's singing, you know, that song, which is like, you know, very, very funny with the braces and the fat suit and everything. It, it's very, very funny. Um, did the song come first or the scene? Did, did, like, I, I was interested to know, like, did you have to, did you always write it with the song involved and did you have to get it cleared or like, how does that process work? If if I, oh. Remember, oh, yeah. I was, if I remember correct, I mean, we didn't have the exact, we, like, we, Ryan said on set, I know all the words to I swear. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just said, go for it. And he, and he sang it. Like we had him do, a, I, you know, Roger had him do a bunch of things. Like it was just like, we needed an opening shot. And he, you know, he knew the, he knew the song. And uh, that just became like a thing he did. But like, I, I'm sure we had something else written but it was not going to be as good. I mean, a lot, I, well, I, I think with that, I, I remember like, you know, cause we, uh, you know, we made sure he didn't sing like, Hey Jude or anything we put <laughs> forward, you know, but, uh, 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 but I remember talking to, uh, you know, the, the guy at New Line at the time back in the nineties, um, um, 90s, 2005, sorry. And, uh, I think we got that cheap. We had a great music supervisor uh, guy, Patrick Houlihan, and he said, this you can get. And Ryan knew the lyrics. Um, and he just, you know, delivered it. But I will say, you know, the other songs, text all wrote in the script. Like forgiveness, like the actual yeah, real they were songs. All, with... They were love from afar, forgiveness. That all the <laughs> lyrics were in there. And they were, you know, perfect, you know. But I, I only I only wrote the first like verse and chorus of forgiveness, and then Roger turned it into, uh, you know, he turned it into Hey Jude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way you got away with using Hey Jude in the movie. <laughs> when right. He was doing exactly. it that way. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, from a technical standpoint, you shoot this movie on thirty five. Roger, you and I discussed this uh, when you were talking with Lauren about after we collided about you know digital versus film. 
But, you know, I, I look at that great shot of Ryan in the mirror and it, it is such an iconic sequence now from for a lot of people who love comedy. Um, the framing of that shot is great, too. It's just this full frame. You have it in one eight five uh, ratio. Right. It's a massive, large shot. It's just this. Ma like, did, did, were you having uh, this might be a weird question, but did you ever have a problem with getting the camera? out of the uh, out of the Not mirror really, i mean like because uh, that mirror gimbaled you know so it wasn't that hard and we had a great dp uh tony richmond uh you know so uh, and you know what 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 was cool about it was uh, and uh, you know when we went to do this movie like ryan had done like everyone knew him from like van wilder two two guys and a girl um you know, but you really saw like genius in action. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there were a lot of times Tex and I were on set and like, this guy's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You, you said it, you said it when we were first, like Roger came to New York and we were doing like, you know, we worked for like 10 days or two weeks on the script. Yeah. Uh, and he said like, Ryan is like Jim Carrey level talent. We're always going to shoot one. Like we're going to let him have a take too. And, oh, cool. you know, like, okay, we've done, we've covered it now go, go play. And, you know, he would decide if he wanted to try something completely different or if he was like, no, I think we got, you know, whatever. And then we'd move on or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you remember um, a specific example of, of something he tried that, that, that actually ended up in the film? I'm sure it's a multiple couple of things, oh. but were there, do you, do you have a, a memory of one where like you did it the way you wrote it and then he did it his way and you're like, oh my God, we have to keep that. I'm sure it happened a couple of times, but you know, there one. I have one that comes to mind, but if you if you have oh uh, go yeah well the scene in, in when when they have their day date and he drops her off and he's in the car alone and oh yeah and he's doing yeah. like the <laughs> yeah. like that he was just going nuts uh, if I remember correctly like yeah that was just like go for it go for it and then he did a whole performance like that was supposed to be a few seconds <laughs> he just went on for like you know almost a minute of of of, of fun and then she comes to the window and, and sees him and it's one of the big laugh moments for sure. It's like an uncomfortable, funny moment. It's like one of those, like, I, I, I actually just rewatched it in, 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 in the best way because, like, it's like you're basically like a fly on the wall in somebody's extremely private moment that they're having, like, a breakdown, basically. And it's like, it, it, that scene is incredible. Um, you know, I want to talk about, obviously, you, you, Roger, is there one for you that comes to mind where that you, you, you let Ryan kind of go? No, and I mean, it? like, you know, that was one of the... the I remember shooting that and I said, I only want to do this in one take, not cut, no coverage, anything like that. And I regretted it because he gave five brilliant takes <laughs> and we couldn't figure out which one to you. <gasps> and it was just torture. Um, but maybe just leaving it and not cutting to her and all that was, was, was the beauty of it. I, I, you know, no, I don't overall because I have no memory anymore. I will say that like, even though Tex was the writer and I was the director and Ryan, we kind of, for me, we always threw out the titles, you know? It was like a bunch of funny guys and we got together and it was like the best idea won. And if Tex had a great directing idea or, you know what I mean? So that's kind of, it wasn't everyone was staying in their lane. Everyone was just like, let's just try to make, we were utter, we were left alone on the movie. It, they they made a shoot in Regina, Saskatchewan, a lovely place, but it was like tax credits on tax credits, and it was forty below zero. <laughs> so planes <laughs> planes literally couldn't land. The studio couldn't visit us. And Toby Emmerich, who's amazing and was a good friend of ours on the film and, and a champion, said, "It's we, we can't land the plane. You're on your own. Don't f this up." You know? <laughs> and 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 it was great. And it kind of empowered Tex and I and Jake Weiner and Ryan. And we were just like, let's just, let's just try to make the funniest movie possible. Yeah. Roger, you did do a brilliant thing though. The first scene you shot, like the, the scene he picked to shoot first was the scene in the house, Ryan in the fat suit, where he, with the yearbook. And oh, he's you know, writing. Dusty, yeah, and Dusty, you know, with the long hair and stuff. Like he shot that scene because it's so funny and he sent that to back to you know back to LA, and because it was such a great scene and so funny, and everybody was like firing on also on day one, the studio never came to bother us. And, and I remember you telling me that as like you know this is a good example of like shoot a great scene first, and the studio will say great, okay, you guys are on your own. And they literally just left us alone because he 
he chose to shoot that that well that thank shoot. you yeah uh that doesn't always work <laughs> <laughs> I was actually about to ask you that, Roger. Like, is that, that working for other films? <laughs> well, you're one for one in my book, so. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is more of a technical question that I'm interested in. And, and, and there's a really, and you're talking about editing and like not cutting in that scene when, when Amy comes up to the car and kind of catches him in that moment. There's a really brilliant edit that occurs, and this might be just something like super nerdy to ask, but we, there's a phone call sequence when his brother gets on the phone and he's doing like the like the the noises while he's talking to Amy's character, and then you have a split screen, and as and as Ryan kicks the door down, you go right to the shot in the room with the brother. And I thought that was a really cool edit, and I wanted to ask about like, did you know on the day you were gonna cut it with his kick into the door? Because you basically go from a split screen right into a one shot of him entering the same room. I think we did room. plan that out just for the framing of it. And, you know, I, I think I'm sure we covered ourselves just in case the going from the device of split screen to would take yeah. you out of the joke. I mean, that's what, again, that's what was great with working with text. We would, and Ryan, we would talk about the music of comedy. You know what I mean? And like, what would keep you in the moment or what would, where we'd be trying too hard. So in that aspect, it wasn't like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm you're just enjoying the laugh. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you planned it. Like the idea of like people invading other people's screen. Yeah. There's something, yeah. We, yeah, we talked about, I think, I think you planned it. You we did, it. we did. I just, you just never know, like you could plan it and then you're oh, like, yeah. well, <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> well, in a weird way, it's almost like an it's almost like an immersive edit. It almost puts you in it more. I would argue it doesn't take. I like yeah, me, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. It's like we're, we're we're bursting into someone's room literally as we cut to the room. It's a. I thought that was a really cool shot. No, um, it, it, but I I wasn't like I, you're, I was like I think this is gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it works. A little less Hitchcock just telling you that this is absolutely going to work. Yeah, you know, there were times where I was like. God, is this body shake gonna work? You oh, know, God, the body shake. And, and like, because you're like, uh, and it's just like literally, I I had text, I had text direct that with with Ryan because you knew the body shake so well. No, well, no, you you're, you're saying you're saying it differently. Ro Ryan, uh, Roger played one of the all time great pranks. I know that was mean of me. No, it was great. It was <laughs> it was fucking it was great. I did perfect. tell the story. So Dude, you can curse. You can curse all you want. By the way, this is this is you can curse. Oh, oh good, good. Fuck. Please right. curse. Yeah, okay. fuck it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, we're do we were shooting the body shake, and again, it's like freezing cold, and they got to do it with no jackets on, and they're doing the body shake, and Jake, the you know uh, associate, you know producer, and 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 also my manager, like you know, we're talking, and he's like, "Is this is this right? Is it right?" And it looked like Ryan was just kind of like shaking her like vigorously. And I was like, no, it's more like you're going for a, a kiss and then the hand comes up and you think it's a hug, but it's actually a, a handshake. And it's like this whole, and it, look, uh, truth be told, this actually happened to me. So this came from a place of, of real. So I remember just taking her and like very calmly and warmly giving her a little, a little shake and then walking off thinking like, oh my God, I'm the biggest you know, loser ever. So they're shooting it and it seems, it, it, I'm watching in the monitor. I'm like, ah, it's not quite right. It's not quite right. And so Roger, you know, I tell him like what, what, what I think it should be. And he goes to shoot another take. And then he goes, hey, Adam, why don't you and Jake come out here and demo it for us? So we go out and we demo and we're shaking each other and like pretending to hug and like whatever. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, I think we got it. And I look back and I realized they all knew exactly what to do. They were just having us perform this. They shot it, they, you know, like we look like, you know, complete tools in front of everybody, but it was great. And I totally, uh, respect a great prank, right. even if it's on me. So, uh, yeah. Right. But, it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the body shake did come from real life, so that was one yeah, thing. Yeah, it did. No, life. a lot of those did. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, Adam, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you is, <laughs> as somebody, and not to get too personal, but I was bullied very heavily in middle school and high school. I think I we all were, have... Kevin. Yeah, I, yeah, but... <laughs> Uh, but I guess we're all in this business, but true, true. <laughs> this is true. But I mean, but the movie does, from comedy aside, it does speak to you. Um, as uh, it speaks to somebody, it speaks to people who've gone through that. And like to me, the scene where that really kind of hit home was the sequence where they read his letter to the to the party in the room. 
Um, and it's just a really sad scene because he genuinely loves this girl and 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 he wrote wrote something to her that only she was supposed to read and then they're reading it like and they're bullying him specifically and i just wonder and you you brought up the the body shake i, I wondered how much of that stuff came from things you may have seen or experienced in in school um because it it was it was oddly it, to me the best part of comedy sometimes is when it hits a, a real groundedness a grounded emotion and i think that's what just friends does is, is it's funny as hell but it also hits home really emotionally for me so i wonder how much of those those scenes came from real situations well sure i mean look truth be told i was in a two-year just friend relationship in college the last okay. two years of college i met this girl she's the perfect girl the problem is she had a boyfriend older guy out of you know not even in school or whatever and we were so close to being a couple except we weren't and you know i, I the whole time i'm thinking like i'm the vice president and he's, you know, the boyfriend's the president and one day he's going to get impeached or assassinated or something and I'll take office and I'm just playing it out. And two years went by. So a lot of stuff from that, you know, that hell zone uh, did, did, you know, happen. And when I wrote the script, I knew the script had a shot at getting made when I turned it into Chris Bender, my manager, and he goes, hey, is this about me? And I was like, what? And then we gave it to Richard Brenner at New Line. He's like, is this about yeah. me? And then I was like, okay, I think we've hit upon something because yeah, absolutely, so many people can relate to it. So yeah, it's so universal. It's so universal, and like, and, like that, and that's why I find it because I mean, even like just yearbook stuff is universal. I was I, like anybody who had a yearbook, you were, what do you want to get it signed by everybody else, and it was like a big deal. But you know, you you go through this film uh, emotionally, but also comedically, and and there's so many great moments. But the the toothpaste scene is obviously something that I just. You know, every time you watch it, you're just like, oh, my God, what happened that day? Did somebody come up with that on the on the day? Was that originally in the script? Roger, I know you talked to Lauren about a little bit about the toothpaste scene. Uh, did Anna Ferris come up with that on set that day? No, because we, we had to buy a lot of toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were like, I, I you know, I, I t we had her drugged up on Vicodin, you know? <laughs> And then we were like, how broad can we go? You know, and I just remember those like Bugs Bunny or, you know, where they were so stupid where they'd wrap their head around something and, and like, you know, I'd run everything by text. <laughs> and we really, and that whole, uh, I, that's one of my favorite scenes I've ever done because th there was a whole choreography to it, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it was like just doing farce um with the pop-ups and all that and oh and when she goes close to his face and like starts putting it on his cheek and like yeah, so yeah just slowly pops up when he's on the <laughs> phone i mean that was we worked hard at that but but also you know sometimes like i think we would be like what's an insane non sequitur you know that you would never put in a script because a development executive would say i don't understand blueberry how does this track you know but it's just funny you know, I'm um, and that was an example of us being kind of left alone to our own devices just to try to make the funniest movie um, where we just had her just say Blueberry. And it was just, <laughs> I don't know why it's funny. I, I don't know. the I don't know the dopamine chemical reaction of why. But um, no, but, you know, that's a, that was the other thing on a Ferris. I mean, She's like, she would do anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's part of the reason why we cast her, because we saw a scary movie. <laughs> and we saw that she'll do anything. She will do anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she's so amazing at it, you know? You know, Adam, I, I, find some, I find this interesting. You work on a script, you write it, and then you see it get filmed, and then you see the final product of the film go out there. I wonder emotionally what that's like for you. Um, just as somebody to like see a scene that you put down on a page, to see it come to life, to see it do it, it, it see it come to life in a perfect comedic way, and then make people laugh. And then now, 15 years later, you and I are talking about the anniversary of one of my favorite comedies of all time. Um, I just wonder emotionally what that's like for you, uh, what you go through when you when you finally see someone speaking your words, and then it and then that magic happening, that chemistry, that funniness happening. What does that feel like? I mean, it's it's surreal, and it's also uh, you know, it just like 
it's just, it, it makes you feel like, oh my God, this is what I was meant to do. Like, this is why I sat down alone and wrote this out. And this is why I took these crazy stories from this hellish time in my life and said, you know what, I'm going to turn this into, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it art, but I, I turned it into entertainment, you know? Mm. And it's, so I remember the first day of shooting, I went up to Ryan and Amy and I almost had to hold back tears because I was like, this is such an amazing moment for me to, to, to have you guys performing this scene that I remember sitting in my underwear alone in the dark typing and I can't believe mm. it's happening, you know? And look, I was very fortunate. Roger and I, we hit it off and he invited me on set and I didn't get paid, but I was there. And, uh, you know, it was, it was <laughs> and it was just, it was just amazing to be there during the production to be turned to, hey, can you come up with a line for this? Or, hey, can we, you know, round table this? Hey, what do you think of this idea? There were times when, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. There were other times where I was the only one that believed something that Roger was doing. And I was like, fuck, fuck everybody else. This is, you're, you're fucking right, man. And, you know, we did form like a comedy alliance. And I remember Roger coming to me and saying, look, you're the only one I trust on this. Is this funny? And I would be like, yeah, I think it's great. And, and off he would go. Like, you know, the toothpaste scene, that, that's all Roger. You know, like he came up with that. And, you know, maybe, you know, more chopped it with Anna, but like, I didn't have anything to do with that. And I remember coming, you know, and, and, and wow. thinking like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Like, you know, kids are going to you know, go crazy on this. So, you know, but it is and that's the beauty for me of having no memory. I just don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tex wrote it. I don't know. Something happened. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Roger, is there something um, emo emotionally when you step on a, your set for the first time each each project that you do? Like, is there is there um, what's it like when you step on set and call action on the first scene of a project you're working on? Um, like, is that something you even like think about, or is it more of just like you're in the moment? Because I, you know, you you prep, you rehearse, you cast, uh, you you know, it's got to be a kind of I a cool wish thing. It, I wish it, well, I, I don't call action, first of all. I have somebody else to do it. AD, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm usually gossiping over a video village or something, and then somebody will go, Roger, we're rolling. Uh, and then I'll feel shame. Um, but, uh, 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 <laughs> um, you know, no, I think there's like butterflies on the way to set, but then you're just like, you're in it, and then you're always like, I gotta make my day, yeah. especially that first day where you're like, I gotta, you know, everyone's looking at you. So you yeah. try to come up, you know, strategically, you you come up with a light day that's gonna give the the studio or whatever something to look at, you hmm. know, like now uh, you have a I would not do like walking across the street. <laughs> 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 out of car. <laughs> note, note to future filmmakers don't do that <laughs> roger how did your cameo uh end up happening in the film i know it, your wife's in the in the in the, oh, in the film right. and your daughter i, I believe. don't even know my cameo you're a yeah you're, you're aren't yeah. you one of the elves no, no. we're the elves that stand oh, that's right. right that's right i forgot about that. my yeah. my 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 eldest who's now 17 um she was one years old and we were like oh this would be a good cameo um so we my wife and i dressed up as elves and she was on santa's lap and yeah that's right. tex has the best cameo i have a great yeah roger gave me the great cameo yeah talk about your cameo uh, uh tex yeah go anna faris is at the uh is at the heavy metal club and i'm the guy <laughs> in the front row who throws a can of beer hits her in the face and, the <laughs> the stage and slams me into the ground it's great I got a great yeah. picture of, of uh, yeah. Although we're both topped by our friend, the producer, Jake Weiner. Um, who, um, he is the guy who says, <laughs> hey, neighbor, <laughs> and Ryan beat with the snowball. With a snowball at him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do, do those things happen like as planned or are they just kind of like on the day kind of thing? Like, do you know that your wife and your daughter are going to be in that scene like in advance or do they come to set and go, I will throw you like in? Day or day or two in advance so the wardrobe people aren't freaking out, you know? Right. So there it's like kind of planned, you I know? Think you, I think you asked me what I wanted to do. You said, hey, what, yeah. what do you want your cameo to be? And then I suggested that. And uh, you were like, great, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's like, it's such a nice, yeah, I literally got a nice email 
today from from Dana, who was the production coordinator on it. I mean, this this whole group has remained very tight because it is one of those movies where when it came out, it kind of did okay. You know, not a lot of people saw it, and then you're like, oh, that's a bummer. Moving on, and then I think it was like, what would you say, like five years later? You know like slow like it took like five years or seven years it started to build and then we started to be on like underrated christmas movies yeah you know and that by the way i'll take this experience over the massive premiere and then yeah you know like this is great it just it just keeps building this the audience and the love for this movie that you know so many people were a part of yeah and you're saying it keeps building and that's something i find really interesting is you know we're 15 years now um and i want to ask each of you uh what the film meant to you then and what it means to you now i, I would imagine y- your lives have changed we've all gone through 15 years of life uh ups and downs, whatever we've been doing in our lives and careers. Uh, I just wonder, like, when, when was, first of all, when was the last time you watched the film, Adam? And, and what does it emotionally mean to you now than it did when you, when you first made it? Uh, let's see, I've watched, I, I haven't watched it in a while, to be honest, but I know, like, I've got, like, people, like, neighbors that want to watch it together, like, friends that want to watch it with me and have me talk them through it and stuff. And that, that's so fun. And like, look, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely a high point on my resume, uh, if not the highest point where I, you know, it's always something I could, I could point to and say, oh, I, I did that. And, you know, I, I love, you know, you know, I'm doing a lot of TV now. I'm even doing some podcast, like, you know, but it's like, you know, I mentioned that I wrote Just Friends and they're like, wait, what? You know, uh, you know, I was at a barbecue one time and a guy started talking about this great movie he saw on the plane. And he was like, oh, it's called Just Friends. And I thought like, oh, this is a setup. And it turns out, no, he just saw it on the plane. They were like, this guy wrote it, this guy wrote it. And like, people were blown away. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a high point. And, and it's just a point of, of pride. And, and uh, I love to, there's in my cat. Uh, I love to, um, you know, I love to talk about it. And, and uh, you know, uh, and, you know, at the time, that was my first movie that got, you know, that got made. So, yeah. Well, listen, I, I want to say thank you, you guys, for your time. Um, I, uh, sorry if I was scattered and all over the place. I no. had so many so many things I, I was trying yeah, to get yeah, to. Yeah, no, I'm glad we could do this. Yeah, I this really appreciate the time. And uh, I hope you guys both know how much this movie meant to me and it meant to a lot of people. I know you do, and obviously, it's, as it's gaining more and more momentum over the years. So congratulations to you guys both. And thank you for geeking out with me for 30 minutes. I really appreciate oh, it. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, man. Appreciate cool. it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.